Hello everyone, welcome, thank you for being here. And in this video we're going to be doing something I think I've done in the past, but um, in this case I'm actually doing because this past week has been a little bit rough on some community members, right? And probably for, for other, other people as well as the, the market has been a little bit messy for the past few weeks. But on this video what I do is showcase how the five steps would have given us around 40R throughout both London and New York in only euro dollar and do keep in mind that as i in the video i do mention some of the trades that i took i do mention why i didn't take some of the the trades that show up but basically this video is not trades that i personally took i didn't take all of them i didn't miss out on all of them i took some losses i took some wins so just wanted to mention that again this is just showcasing the five steps how even the direction was not really much of something to worry and even the direction for me was something that made me miss out on a trade this week uh specifically but also allowed me to take one trade uh that ended up in profits so that's truly pretty much it right um this video is just showcasing the five steps showcasing what i personally trade what i personally look for in the market and basically how i worked that throughout this past couple of weeks as you already know had a really really nice outcome so i hope you enjoyed this video hope you have a nice week ahead of us and i'll be talking to you on the next one well you already know what video this is we're going to be basically going over the past month of price action trying to see where the five steps showed up how did they show up and basically gathering a little bit of confidence on the strategy and everything because in weeks like this where i read that Many of you actually ended up on break-even, barely in profits, or had a rough week, or basically even in, in losses. It's good to do stuff like this, to just go back to your charts or go back to your notes of previous couple of uh, trades that you've taken, where you see the five steps working as you intend to see them or to trade them. And it just gives you a little bit of, co of a confidence boost that... um. It's always necessary, right? It's always not necessary, but always good to have. So also, I'm not sure how the mic sounds, but should sound much better than previously. I've gotten a little bit of a temporary fix that uh, should allow me to record without much of an issue, as long as I don't shoulder the mic. And I sh wait, shouldn't, theoretically. I guess we'll find out throughout the video, but if I do, it should be just a couple of seconds that it just sounds bad. So, this is how it's going to work out. Where I'm going to be using TradingView, right? And using the replay bar, using this um, indicator, which is ICT Kilson by London and something. Lunda. Oh, sorry, ICT Sessions. Le Leon Shallow, something like that. The most downloaded one. I actually saw this one that uh, Kelvin had on his charts, and I really liked the. The concept of it and well designed or well not not designed but edited it so it's fine by me and we're basically going to be going over london session and new york session right looking at how the five steps showed up in basically the past four weeks so theoretically we should have this week which is monday tuesday thursday sorry monday tuesday uh wednesday thursday and friday right that's what theoretically we should have on a weekly basis and theoretically we should be able to go back for um well for weeks right because um the trading mood just allows you to go back for weeks into one minute and as we go as down as the one minute that's as far as we can go and plus i don't want to make this too but too much of a video um that is already going to be quite large so yeah also, not going to be back testing. I'm going to be going back at the end of the day to do somewhat of a post market analysis, see if the five steps showed up, how did I do, and basically just go with that. Also, I'm not going to be paying attention to the direction, right? Because I'm going to be looking only at the 15, the 5, and the 1 minute chart, just at the five steps entirely on their own. Doesn't really matter if they worked out, if they worked out, if they didn't, if they happen in favor of the trend or not. They're just going to be looking exactly at that, right? Simple as that. So, uh, yeah, well, I think we'll just begin. Let me do this, actually. One, two, three, four weeks. So theoretically, this is as far as we're actually going. Let me make this bigger. And give me an actual call. Okay, so, um, can we, we'll just go day by day, 
right? So we'll just go back to this. Let's go up till the impulse just in case. And let's see what we got on. This is Monday, November 14th. Let's see what we had. So again, Monday, November 14th. I do not remember anything about this, but of course, again, we're not going to be bank testing at all, so it doesn't really matter that much. And let's see. London session, keep in mind that it is from 2 to 5. And actually, let me make this uh, this one. Okay, so London session is from 2 to 5. New York Hilton is from 7 to 10, right? So, London. Going higher. And you run sell side liquidity. We're going to get right here. We get a mitigation there, so we'll analyze that. And then we get we'll run and buy sell liquidity going above. Uh is this this is actually Asia's high. Keep in mind that this one is Asia, this one's London, this one's New York. It barely goes above that, but that's not the only high that it actually goes above. As an example, this one's a pretty nice high. We get the market shift on this one. The per volley gap right here. Alright, so we have the five steps both higher and lower. Right. So now let's let's see what we can get. So let me actually do the next. On on New York we have price now going higher, run buys liquidity, but just continues going higher. It takes on buys of liquidity. We could use this as our market shift, but there's no fair valley gap. Then this is a fair valley gap, but the, the market shift has already happened right this is just a break of structure so nothing in my opinion for for the new york session in this case let's just go down into the one minute and see what happened throughout london in this case so remember we had the five steps basically this is step three it goes aggressively higher there's a mark shift right here and that's our for belly gap to execute on now it does pull away quite a lot and it takes this high also the entry would have been a little bit complicated due to the fact that the entry goes here this stop loss goes all the way down to this low and already to this high we're barely getting 1.41 r and if we wanted to be a bit more aggressive i suppose we could be going above these highs but that just barely gives me a 2.73 r now keep in mind that what i'm trying to do here is just showcase the five uh the five steps and see how they work out on how they've worked out in a couple of uh couple of weeks so in this case, this theoretically is a loss. I do not believe that I would have actually taken it. But well, again, showcasing the five steps. So let's just go for that. Um, I think we're going to do it as simple as this. We could be going far, far more into more details. And I think I probably should. So I can actually use this in the future. But I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it simple for now and we'll see how we do okay so for now minus one r in london then we got again the five steps this is the market shift this is the five minute for belly gap it mitigates it goes aggressively lower being this the market shift and we get the fair belly gap right here between this low and this high keep in mind that again we're not caring about direction at least not at the time we could be going further into that to maybe avoid the buy and take just a sell or we could have missed out on the sell as well so that would have depended quite a lot. Below the slow, we're barely getting a 1.84 R. Could have gone for a farther away entry to get at least 3 R before it below that low. I don't think that's something that we should actually do, at least not in this case. Because um, if the trend was to be respected, theoretically we could go under that low. But it is a pretty large target with a barely getting 3.88 R. So. Would have been difficult to, to target mostly, but at the end of the day, it is the five steps, it's the entry there, and that basically gives us 3.88 R. 3.88 R. And cool. London, sorry, New York again, we had nothing, so let's just avoid that. What I'm actually going to do is leave the drawings. So if I actually decide to do the other thing, which I'm very sure that I should and likely will, I'll just come back and take screenshots of this i think that is a very good idea so let's just move on right i'm also going to be making cuts in between the days so just in case i get an electricity cut or something like that i do not lose the entire video because that will be painful as fuck so this is tuesday november 15th 
and let's go down to the one minute and do the exact same thing we did just now. And I can already see how New York is going to not allow us to trade it. Simple as that. London starts going aggressively higher. Nothing for us to truly do. We get a little bit of a range, change in direction. Can we sell from here? Well, if we're looking at the five steps, what do we have around around liquidity? Remember that I don't use well, I don't use liquidity that is old. And this I would have considered already old, but look at how large is the move before it actually causes a reaction. So I will not count as if we had step one in this case. So for me, um, I cannot trade this and I do not believe these are the five steps. So nothing in here. Uh, oh, this is the, the kill zone. Where is the, okay, all the way down. Now, um, so we get the run sells of liquidity, aggressive move higher. There's no verbalic gap here. Also, I don't really believe we would have gotten or we would have had anything to use as a market shift in here either. So nothing. I actually checked the 15 minute just in the case there was something to utilize. And we do get the verbalic gap there, but this run of liquidity, I do not think is, I do not think it's actually good at, at all. This run of liquidity, so I will not use this. I, as I don't consider this liquidity, I cannot consider this as a step one, right? On the five minute, however, we can see this low and this one, and it is somewhat close. But in the 15 minutes, just a couple of weeks, so I do not consider that step one, right? I don't think that's step one of our strategy, so I'm just not gonna go for that. Now, New York, being from seven to 10, we get something here where we have around liquidity and aggressive move higher, the market shift, this for value gap. But again, I do not trade with the news, right? I have seen some of you trading when price actually does this, uh, when we have news with it. And there was an example that actually worked out really, really recently. And it can work out, of course. And today's, I, we actually got a trade today with uh, price action with the news. And it, I do believe that it was working out, at least as far as I was able to see it, right? Yeah. So this is the trade that I had taken on paper trading, but as you can see right there, right, uh, I was taken out because my stop loss was aggressive. If we would have been all the way up to the high, we would have been fine, but well, nothing for us to truly do about, about that. So uh, moving forward with this one, there's nothing in here, so I'm going to say that we didn't have the five steps, although as you can see after the session, we do get around liquidity, market shift for probably gap and potential lower time for opportunities, but as you know, um, we are only looking at the kill sense, right? I'm not going to be going further, nor, yeah, no, further than that. Simple as that. Okay, so, put the one hour and go back into the next one. So, this is a Wednesday, six, uh, November 16th. Let's put the lines. Actually, I didn't need the first ones, but that's fine. Now, let's see what we have. So, uh, Asian high, Asian low, mm, high taken, but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't act on it. It's going higher, ranges, takes a time bit of sales of liquidity, aggressively higher, mark shift potential entries, but that's outside of the kill zone. It goes lower, not enough liquidity in my opinion. This is a tiny run on liquidity, which later on, as you can see here, leads to this tiny third body gap. So do we have the five steps? The liquidity being just a tiny bit of a week for one candle and the run on the liquidity being just a tick or two, if we're lucky, actually three. I wouldn't consider this as a run on liquidity. Let's look if a lower time for opportunity actually showed up, but I will not consider whatever happened, whether it's a win or a loss on this one. So we can count the market shift above this high which is with this for belly gap, as you can see, price, has, price actually does not mitigate it. And if it would have been conservative, we're going for the actual market shift all the way up here. We could have run into the, run into other time frames to see if a for belly gap, such as this one as an example, which looks a little bit better as well, uh, could have been used, right? And of course, the thing is that the stop was sort of been all the way down there. Now, is this a five steps? In my opinion, it isn't due to the run liquidity. It is a run liquidity, but it just goes by three ticks. So I'm going to not consider that one, but it's something that we could consider. Maybe should consider. Uh, now, we're going to go for clearer things, right? I'm not going to go for anything less than that. Uh, consider going higher. 
This is around liquidity. It does sync with market shift, continues going higher. Get a market shift here. After around liquidity, no for belly gap. No for belly gap. Somewhat displacement, but already the market shift had already happened. Little bit of a range. Now we jump onto New York. We have a run of liquidity. Pressure lower, causing a market shift. We're up up in the five minutes. So let's see. Also, we got a run. I do remember this trade. This trade was taken on this by me. We have the five steps in both of these uh, scenarios. Well, actually, it's that one, two, and three. We cannot know. Let's not yet. But the lower time frames had. So we get the five minute run liquidity, mark shift, the fair belly gap, mark a shift by breaking this low, which generates the opportunity to sell from this fair belly gap. Now, um, price does pull away quite a lot, and we even have news in the middle. So I do not think that this is something that I would have personally traded. Uh, it is the five steps, so I think we could consider it. But due to everything in the middle, I think this is somewhat of an impossible scenario for me to keep an entry like that. Is it the five steps? Do we get step one, two, three, and four? And well, finally five? Yes. Is it an entry that could have been taken in any way possible? In my opinion, no. We got the, 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 the news in the middle. Price pulls away out of the entry for... Well, 18 minutes doesn't really sound like much, but look at all the price action that moved. Also, target, I think, would have been important in this case. Of the fact that this is a potential target, and price hits it before the entry is actually triggered. Where's the stop loss? Well, above this high, probably. And that's 3.64R that price moves before triggering my entries. I'm going to say that it, it is the five steps, just not something that it could have personally traded, right? So I'm just going to leave something here to come back to, but it's not something that I personally could trade. Now, uh, we cannot see the market shift, but I do remember this was a special case in which the market shift happened, but the uh, FXCM ended up leading that uh, move. It barely does so, but well, it did happen in the live market. Five minute for volley gap. Market shift on this one, which generates that volley gap for us to trade. And that is our entry. How far are we going? Depends really on what we want to use. I think below this low, we're getting 4.6 to 3R, so I'm really confident that that's more than good enough. Those 4.6 to 3R. Uh, not minus. Let me. What can we do? I'd like to use something. Actually, that's fine if I can find it. Um, potential 4.64R. Nah, nah, nah. We're not even going to say it because it's just insane. I don't think that entry is something that we could have participated on in any way possible. So I'm just going to ignore it, even though it's a profitable trade. But overall, it's uh, it's just impossible for me to take something like that. Uh, this is Thursday, November seventeenth. See what we got on this week. Asia left the lower, higher. This is midnight. London. So London goes higher. First of all, it takes action. It's also liquidity. Let's not ignore press action. Uh, bottom. That's also liquidity. Market shift already happens here, but it also breaks the high. All the way up here, so that's fine. Hit the fair value gap. Then we get run some buys of liquidity, market shift below that low. Fair value gap happens really low. I don't think I could have participated on that one, although there is a tiny fair value gap here that could have been used. But I don't believe that this is now, it doesn't even mitigate it. And the other one is this one. The thing is that already market shift has happened. Alright, market shift happened here, and even if we wanted to count this low, which is a little bit better, it's still out of the out of the range of this Fibonacci gap. We'll see if anything shows up, but I don't really believe that's based on my five steps, so I don't think that's going to be an opportunity. Let me actually analyze uh, London. Oh, I remember this day. 
So, run by some liquidity. Mark shift. Find a bit of a farewell gap right there. Not much displacement as you can see, which is some way that we could have avoided on this potential break even or maybe even loss. But we'll find out soon enough. And after that, run and sell some liquidity for belly gap without a mark shift, so we cannot use that one. Jump onto the one minute. Oh, what a beautiful entry. Well, kind of complicated. It's just one week. You can see how it uh, did to this week and this. The move overall, you can kind of see the, the market shift, but I do not think so. That I do not think that I would have actually considered this as a market shift. Right? It works out wonderfully, and we even have the fact that Northern Block is mitigated, but I do not want to confuse concepts or anything like that. We're not using Northern Blocks yet, so uh, something like this would have been the entry. So this trade with this entry, I do believe. Yeah, definitely. We're getting 4.38 hour before even this retracement happens. So this definitely would have been a profitable trade. And if we wanted to be a bit more conservative, we have a couple of equal highs here. Or down here, although we're getting 2.67 barely, so probably would have targeted this. And aggressively going all the way up to this one. But of course we're getting well, we're getting five five hour alone, so I don't think that's made that much. Really risky for so probably 3.4 R is what it would have been. And again, this is the farewell gap in the five minute that is out of range. It does give an entry if we consider, yeah, definitely. This is a mark shift with this farewell gap and the stop was all this high we're taking out here. And then, as you can see, price actually does continue going lower. But with either farewell gap, either we would have gotten a loss or just a miss, at least with the price action that we can currently see, right? So, again, this is out of bounds. Uh, this is a zone that we cannot actually trade from, and this farewell gap is not mitigated. This one, it really depends on the the mark shift. I'm going to say, or R, no, sorry, 3. Point, how much was it? 3.4. Right. Just with the question marks, just uh, to go back to maybe, uh, yeah, sure. That's Thursday, November 17th. Because it could have been because it was a market shift due to the retracement, clear retracement with the candle, but it's just very complicated. And this one again, we didn't get anything through right here, through New York. It's there's nothing that we can do about it. Oh sorry, this one, yeah. Do you get the five steps? Oh, so this one had very little displacement, which is something that could have taken us out of this uh out of considering this as an opportunity to take advantage of. It peaks around 1.73, so definitely not part, no partials. So, what have we taken this? I can't really say for sure, honestly. Because it is the five steps, but there's no displacement in the five minute. Look at the market shift where it is and the time that it actually takes to get there. There's not much displacement, neither in the five minute or, nor in any other time frame. I kind of want to say no, but it might be biased. They have the five steps, which, well, it does include displacement. No, I'm not going to include this one. Um, I do not believe that this makes sense. Just to remember it, you know? We've got an entries without much displacement, to be fully honest. But um, it's not usual for us to see that happening like that, you know? Friday, November 18th. Let's see what we get. So this is the... Asian session, not sure why it was moved. Ron buys the liquidity, displacement lower, Ron sells the liquidity. Asian slow taken in London. Market shift. A lot of lots of sell sell liquidity being taken. Look at that. I'm saying this because I want you to understand why I'm not even looking at these five steps, one which we have run buys the liquidity. Market shift, very probably gap. It doesn't make sense to look for sales after such amount of sales liquidity has been taken. Could it work? Definitely could. Just not interested in it. it we might have taken it, taken it either way, but uh, and the market shift happens here, which gives us this and probably a better for probably gap in the 15 minute. Not really. It's pretty high up. 
a look at what happens actually. A lot of buys of liquidity is taken in the meantime. That kind of takes off the the buying necessity or just the, the, the objective of the buys, right? Because oh, we do have price actually close to us. Ah, no, never mind. Probably would have tried to trade it either way. Yeah, so do we get the five steps in lower time frames? Actually happens. Uh, okay. So the mitigation on the area happens here when it's already outside of the kill zone. So we actually get to avoid a loss just with that. Supposing that we actually get lower time frame confluences. Now, New York begins higher. Power of three concept with that. Run by the liquidity. Does it also, it also takes sales of liquidity, but look at why we're going to ignore the buys. Takes sales of liquidity, goes higher, doesn't cause a market shift, and we're looking by, we're looking for sales already. So it doesn't cause a market shift after taking sales of liquidity, so we're not looking for this for bubble caps, right? Very simple to understand. So run buys of liquidity, market shift for bubble gap. Let's see what's on to the lower time frames. Is that the only thing that I want in the charts? Sure. Uh, mitigates the area. Oh, we do not actually get a mark shift. Oh, that's a shame. Unless we counted this as a mark shift, but even by counting that one, we're, we're not really getting much. So, five minutes for rolling up, aggressive move lower, no mark shift, nothing for us to do, which is truly a shame. This one, as you can see, the 5-minute probability gap being this high. I think this is the extreme 5-minute probability gap because we definitely have more. And stop loss up here, plus 4. It's 82. That would have been a lovely entry. Down to this low, we're already getting around 3R. I'm going for this low here. This one here, London's low. That looks like a beautiful trade. But sadly, of course, we're with for the lower time from confluences. So nothing for us to do, truly. Uh, and a shame. Right, truly a shame. And afterwards, this five minute for bullet gap is not something that we can actually use, right? This one or this one. I don't think there's a market shift. This one is a market shift in the five minute, but there's no run and buy some liquidity. So no, I'm gonna say no. It's a shame because it's a lovely move, but if we're going to wait for the market shift in the lower time frames, then it is what it is, you know. It's nothing for us to truly do. That's it for week number one. We get away with 3.88 through London, plus 4.63 through New York, minus 1R. That's 7.51R in the week of... Actually, I do it like that's fine. 7.51R. If we do just London, sorry, London is 2.88R. And New York is just 0.4.63 R, right? Because do keep in mind that it's unlikely for us to trade both London and New York. For me personally, it definitely is. So let me do this. And also do this. Oh, so we're going to jump now into week number two of our going back into price action. Where I also want to do this with a GB dollar. But due to the time that this has taken, which I think has been 20 minutes approximately, it's going to take me around 40, 80 minutes to 1 hour 20 to just make it on Euro dollar. I probably will do that on GBP dollar next week. Yeah, likely. So let's jump just on to week two. Okay, so let's begin with week number two, beginning on Monday 21st with the Asian session on Sunday. That's nothing that we really worry about. And let's just go down straight into the five minutes and see what we can get out of this. London session begins going a little bit against the trend, aggressive map lower for bounty gap, market shift. We could count this as a run on liquidity, but I am not going to use this tiny bit of a candle as a high to be used as liquidity. So there's, that's no step one. Right, so as it is not the step one here, I cannot use this as step two, step two, and then three, four, and five. So nothing for me to do that there, and then just continue going lower without really giving much. For New York, didn't do much. New York 
Uh, so I'm looking, I've actually been looking only at the patterns that happen south of the kill zone, right? So the five steps entirely happen south of the kill zone. So I haven't, I would have not really considered this. Well, let's do consider that, as we can also consider this with this. Well, the run liquidity does happen in South of the Session, so that's a bit different uh, compared to this one. But, um, yeah, I've seen setups like this work out either way, right? As long as the five steps are there, it doesn't really matter when they happen, as long as the execution is made in South of the Kill Zone, which is the important part. This mitigates the area. This is just one candle, so I don't think I should consider this as a market shift. But then this is a market shift, so that would have led to this entry and a potential loss through New York. Right? I think that makes good enough sense for us to try to take this and nothing else to really do about it. But simply one loss. Let me actually write it. So 21st. Suppose it's the 25th. And New York has already provided a one loss. So, what have we done something about that one? In my opinion, no, not really. We got the five steps and all. It's just a little bit of a massive price action, right? Pretty down into this camp. There are things that we could have used, but nothing in particular that would have been definitive in this case. Now, uh, run sales liquidity, a bit of a question, market shift tiniest fair value gap in here i am not going to consider that one so side your run of buy sell liquidity somewhat in favor of the trend but the london trend right the fact that we get a mark shift here and again we're going for the for the five steps right so this probably is something that we would have tried to identify but as an example as i said recently um what i'm doing with reversals is just waiting for second entry basically the second time the five steps show up after the change in direction, of course. So, five minute for Goldie got mitigated, no market shift, no market shift, and this could have ended the execution, therefore, this would have ended the second loss of the day. How could we avoided this one? Well, New York minus one art. How could we avoided this one? Really, just one market shift, one run on liquidity. This ended up being just a run, sells the liquidity to then continue higher, but as you can see, the trend overall later on is respected, giving us a run liquidity, a market shift on this low is broken, fair value gap, and I do believe there was an entry on this, but well, nothing that we can actually take, because again, we're looking for the five steps inside of the New York or the London kill zone, right? So I want to keep that consistent. So at the end of the at the end of this video, I can say so. This is exactly what we did. This is exactly the concepts that uh, not the concepts, the results we got out of it. Now this is Tuesday, November 22nd, let's see what happened through it. London begins by taking this tiny bit of a sell side, caressing a fire, market shift above this high, no for belly gap, if we were to use this one, let me actually check if the 15 minute had anything. Because I do believe it makes sense. Ah, but the run and sell side liquidity doesn't actually happen. Which is a shame, really, but nothing that we can actually do about it. It's the way that I trade it, so um, I'm not gonna change that uh, in the middle of the of the analysis, right? Uh, the slow is not taken. So basically, this is around liquidity. Ideally, this is the market shift that we use. So even by using this market shift and not this one, which is a pretty clear swing high, we're still we don't really have this for belly gap in our advantage to be used, right? So, even if we had an entry on that, I, I can't actually check it. And run a buy side and no mark shift. Time run sell side, so we might get something on this. Let's actually analyze that. And afterwards, New York, bit of a range, aggressive of lower, run on sell side, aggressive of fire, pretty obvious. No, not actually not pretty obvious. Let's see what happens in this. Afterwards, another run sell side. Market shift above this high, which gives us no fair value gap, so nothing for us to use. Basically, we have a potential entry through London and a potential entry through New York. London could be a profit, New York could be a loss. The brights mitigates the area, uh, no market shift. Then we have this move higher, which does check cause a market shift, but without a fair value gap, could have been executed on the order block. Then another break of structure, uh, order block, fair value gap. 
And this is something that I personally not am not sure if I would have traded. But as you can see, it is a Fervelli cap with uh, the five steps overall, so it could have been taken, but less than ideal price action. All right, less than ideal. Stop loss. And so that load should be respected for right about the direction of the analysis. And so this is step three, four, and four happens when this high is broken, and then the verbally cap. So it does happen within that this right the, the high and the low that causes the market shift. But of course we have this press action in the middle that is actually not supposed to be there. I don't think this is a trade I would have personally traded. It is the five steps, but I don't like when that happens really. Let's move on. Uh, New York gives us mitigation on the area. Equal lows there. Question of fire, market shift, no verbalic gap. And even if this is if the verbalic gap we're going to use, I'm not taking this one. And I do not consider that, that as the five steps because this is the market shift. This is where the uh, verbalic gap in the one minute should show up, right? So theoretically, we could have taken 4R. On this one, well, actually five, but definitely would have been closed at four. So I'm gonna call it four, but I am very likely, very confident that uh, I don't think this is an actual opportunity to take. And that's pretty much it about to stay. Let's move on to Wednesday. Wednesday, November 23rd. Let's see. Asian session. I'm drawing the this, the Asian session for no reason. Really, I'm not using it uh, using it at all. So um, okay, Asian high is taken, but it ranges tiny runs outside liquidity market shift. Oh, but that's happening outside of the kill zone. What if we try to execute from this? Keep in mind that we took sell sell liquidity market shifted, and this verbal gap is inside that market shift. Uh, maybe. Uh, well, let me analyze everything. Then we have a wrong liquidity and market shift. Fervaldi gap. Uh, that's pretty much it about London, or so it seems like. Unless we wanted to count this from the sell side. Market shift above this high. It's a this move. I don't think I should. But well, we'll see what it lower time frames gives us anything, which I don't think so, but. Also, it's a five couple of steps that don't make lots of sense, to be fully honest. New York, ranges, 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 aggressive move higher, run of buy side, move lower, no market shift. I cannot count this tiny bit of a run as a run sells liquidity. I'm not going to consider whatever happened in the middle in here. And then simply a continuation. I'll draw it to see what happened, but this is not a trade that I can personally take, really. Uh, on this one, price pulls away as, as much as this. I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm not even going to look at it. And I remember this one. But the market shift is, of course, here, and we get no fair value gap in the one minute, but the two or the three, which was it? Remember that this is something that theoretically, when we don't have a one minute entry, we should look into. Right? So it's not that I'm just fabricating a entry or anything here you know but um look at this look at the first let's stop this would have been awful so target's definitely down here that's 2.5 so that kind of complicates things could have gone for a larger for higher entry to try to get that but i don't think we should do that so either aggressive more aggressive stop loss or a more aggressive target either way would have been fine i think uh, what's the 3 minute candle that creates it? 3 minute candle that creates it is this one. So theoretically, your ICT words, we could use this as our stop loss, right? which would have given us a much better entry, right? Um, as we're getting 4.4 on that one, we could be higher in the stop loss to get a safer stop loss while we're still getting that, uh, that good couple of hours. So I'm going to call this 3.5. Pretty clear couple of steps. Again, keep in mind that all of these results that I'm showing here are based just on the five steps without um, really worrying about the, the direction that much. Because to be fair, in the, uh, the past couple of weeks, we haven't really gotten a clear direction to actually go through or go for, right? 
So again, this is the five steps to try to go bullish. At no point we get a market system for Relic up to buy, so just gonna completely ignore that. New York, on the other hand, uh, market shift happens here. There's no verbally gap in here. There's a verbally gap down there, but I'm, of course, I'm not going to keep my entry after such time has actually happened. So I'm going to say that we actually didn't get an entry through New York. That's pretty much it about Wednesday. Now we need to go to Thursday. Oh, Thursday, November 24th. Let's look. Let's just go straight down into the five minutes. Let's see what the different sessions gave us pretty premium prices i don't think i need to say that but well again we're not looking into higher time frame analysis for direction bias wise uh london begins trades a bit higher taken by slight liquidity first of all we have a lot of equal highs right and second of all the run on liquidity is much deeper than we than we have seen in other cases it is just with one week, but overall it does go much further than in other cases. Market shift happens down here, so this is not a verbality gap that I can use, as it is mitigated before the market shift. And that is a verbality gap that I can personally use. So we'll see what we can actually get in the lower time frames later on. Price retraces, uh, no market shift to go lower, ranges, and per New York begins going higher, blah, blah, blah. Uh, New York begins by so pre New York to sell side market shifts and New York begins by mitigating a parabolic gap created in that so we can look for entries in here ranges because aggressively higher versus higher uh, very tiny run and that's pretty much it we don't really get the the chance to do much do we no. Okay. So now we just need to jump onto the one minute and see what happened in the different five steps that we got. Um, the run of buys liquidity, the market shift, the five minute for volley gap, price mitigates it, starts going aggressively lower. This is just one candle, so we cannot count that as a market shift. This is a couple of candles, and it is a clear swing low. I got a fair volley gap right there. Stop plus all the way up to the high. That's 47. What's our target, though? Got a couple equal lows on that. Something that we could try to target. That's 4.36. So probably would have been close before that at 4R at the very least. So yeah, pretty beautiful trade. We just get the lower top for the confluences that we look for. Nothing more than that. And then to buy, we get at the beginning of the kill zone a market shift, mitigation of the probability gap. And stop loss being all the way down to the low. I think I am safe. Well, I do add two, two ticks, as usual, as you know. Um, but I'm not sure if the spreads would have taken me out. What's our target? Well, we could be aggressive and go all the way up to that high. I don't think we should do that. So, why can we go for it? 4R, I think, is going to be safe enough. And it's actually right before that little bit of a uh, retracement. But overall, beautiful trade right there. So, basically, we got 4.3, but this, but 4 and four both uh sessions gave us a lovely well not sessions but kill zones gave us a lovely couple of traits so nothing for us to to do but uh or take advantage of them right friday november 25th let's look at what the different sessions gave us okay uh london Goes lower, it takes also liquidity, although it does respect this couple of equal lows back here, but we'll keep that in mind. Market shift, fair rally gap, and potential interest in that. Also, this is respected while it takes buy sell liquidity and takes buy sell liquidity from this high, although it's very minor around on liquidity. This is the most important one. There's a market shift without a fair rally gap, and then we get the market shift with the fair rally gap right there we get the chance to sell and to buy so we'll analyze that later then it continues going lower without giving us much of a chance unless we would have tried to sell here with this run of liquidity this market shift and this for value gap 
I do not think so. I do not think that we should have tried to take this due to the fact that, it, that we're pretty low in price. But overall, it is the five steps, so we'll take a bunch of that. Although the market shift is kind of up there, it doesn't really matter. So those are the two areas where I can see the five steps in your dollar this day. Let's check out the lower time frames. The buy definitely gives an opportunity, which ends up in a loss. So we'll keep that one in mind. And the sell also does so. Right, so get the buy, that fails. Five minute for volley gap, press move lower, market shift for volley gap, and that is our sell as well. Top of sell at this high, 656. And could be aggressive and target all the way down there, although we're getting barely 3R at that one. Uh, so I guess that's as far as, as far as I'm going. Although we have the scalpel vehicle lows, then the scalpel vehicle lows. I think this should have been at least a 4R target down there. By offering or higher in our entry. And probably close in partials along the way, because otherwise this would have been an awful entry. But suppose we would have held through the entire thing, as we're not really counting partials on this. Um, so yeah, blend them barely inside of the session. Plus 4R, and of course, minus 1R. Um, London, sorry, New York. Yeah, but it doesn't actually give us a market shift. It is a one minute, a, just a one minute, right, candle. So I cannot really use this as a market shift to use this as an entry. So no entry to sell, so we basically avoid a loss by that one. And critical. That's the end of second week. That gave us a lot of hours through London and barely two hours through New York. 3.88 London 4.63 New York Now the results on this one 16.6 are Being that 2 are New York 14.6 are London That is an insane difference insane difference uh we go okay so we go from monday november 28th to december 2nd i suppose let's see what this one gave us week number three which begins on s monday november 28th and ends on Friday, December 2nd. Let's see what we got through London and New York on this week. And this is what we have. So London trades lower, takes sell sell liquidity. Trace higher, takes buy sell liquidity, but it doesn't so market shifts but doesn't create a for belly gap. Market shift here, for belly gap here, price trace onto it. I think it would have been difficult being as such premium prices because we had this impulse and a tiny bit of a consolidation, another pretty big impulse, and then this tiny mitigation on it. I think it could have been difficult, but I guess we'll find out what we get. London, sorry, not London, New York, takes by sell liquidity, market shift. So if we want to count it all the way down here, it's fine. It's the same outcome. We get a fair really cap to sell from right here. We'll see if anything shows up. And it just continues going lower without giving much. So. Let's jump onto the one minute and see what we got. Wanna get about Asian session. So it mitigates the area, being this the mitigation, mark a shift. It actually gives an entry. Somehow. Barely mitigates it. Remember that the entries should always contain the spreads. I don't always do that, but should always contain the spreads. Problem is target as we have, well, we could be aggressive and go for this high here. That's a 4.65. I think I would have been happy with 3.5 on this one, to be fully honest. So we'll keep that. And that's pretty much it about London. Then New York. If says, oh, that's a shame. If says the, the run, a tiny run liquidity, the market shift, and there's no fair value gap. The fair value gap that could have happened was basically filled in by this candle. 
and it doesn't give us much of a chance to actually participate on it, which is a shame, so that means that the only trade that we could have actually gotten today would have been uh, the London 3.54. R. Again, we could have gone for further more than that, but I would have been much happy with that to just begin the week at 5.27 a.m. my time. So I'm going to call that today, honestly. Let's move on to Tuesday. So this is Tuesday, November 29th. London goes lower, doesn't take sell side, it goes aggressively higher, uh, respects this bit of price action, aggressively lower, sell side, no big round of buys liquidity here to look for sells to be fully honest, so I'm not going to consider that, goes aggressively higher, there's a run of sell side below this low, tiny fair belly gap, let's see if price action provides anything with that. Run on buy side without a market shift, so it doesn't really worry us. Run on buy side liquidity in this. Market shift happens here, which allows us to sell from this Fervoli gap. I do not think that we could have sold from this one as the Fervoli gap is mitigated before the market shift occurs. So I think that's it. We get a market shift here without a. Uh, I do have run on liquidity below that. Nothing I should have used in my opinion. Plus the theoretical execution would have happened outside of the kill zone. Let's go down to the one minute, see what we have. So first mitigation happens here. Uh retracement, blah blah blah. We could use this as a market shift, but being the fact that this is it goes down a straight line, respects this low. This market shift happens, but it barely does so. I do not think we should have considered this as an entry. Um, oh, well, let's just put it in the statistics. I don't personally think I would have participated in this again due to the, due to the market shift being weak. Right? I could have been the target. It goes deeper into it, market shift, better entry on both of these, but it doesn't trigger, so nothing for us to do. And then we get the potential sell here. Get a market shift when this is broken, so theoretically we could have executed on this for bullet gap from this high to this low. I am not going to do that because it's such a large stop loss that it doesn't really make sense. So we're saying one loss in London. Personally, I do not think I would have participated on it. And zero entries through New York, right? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, hold on. No, that's fine. Cool, let's jump on to Wednesday now. Okay, uh, I think that should be enough. Wednesday, November 30th. Let's see what we get. Price goes aggressively lower, taking sell side liquidity from a couple of lows. Goes aggressively higher, leaves a fair volume gap behind. We have a market shift, we have sell side liquidity created. Price trace back into that. We'll see what happens later on. We get a run by liquidity, market shift without probably gaps to sell from. So I don't think there's just anything that we could have actually used. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Nothing that interests us. Well, actually, this probably gap is step three in this case, but it happens outside of the kill zone. So nothing for us to do. New York opens, ranges a little bit, goes aggressively higher, takes by liquidity, aggressively lower. Market shift, when it takes so much to actually cause a market shift, I do not tend to like it. And actually, the only parabolic gap was already mitigated, so nothing for us to pay, it, pay attention to. And then we could have looked into this one, but as you can see, the mitigation happens outside of the kill zone, so we're going to completely avoid that. Let's see what London gave us. Uh, so it mitigates the area. Look at this beautiful couple of equal lows. Takes that, mitigates the area, market shift, for the gap price actually doesn't mitigate it sadly. If we would have gone for this market shift, we get this one, which is a lovely for the gap that is executed, but sadly, not something that I personally would have traded as I would have considered the market shift down here. And my stop loss ideally would have been all the way down to this, which doesn't make sense. This trade would have picked at around 5R. Nothing for me to take on that one, to be fully honest. So that's pretty much it, and this one we said nothing. Moving on to Thursday. Cool. So Thursday, December 1st. Let's see what we get. Go down into the one on the five minute. Uh, run by sell liquidity, aggressive lower for volley gap and market shift, but no trigger. Goes quite aggressively lower. The run is also liquidity, multiple, all of these lows and everything that happens in the middle. Market shift, fair volley gap, 
So this is something that we could have used. That one's not mitigated, so we'll use this one. And even on this one, we actually get like a run of sales liquidity below all of these lows. Couple of clear equal lows. And market shift is this one. Mitigation. Corolla gap is here. We could have used the order block as you can see right there. Actually, a really good uh, extra thing. But um, it happens outside of kills, so, so nothing for us to do. Run and sell side liquidity, for value gap, for value gap, price doesn't mitigate either of them, so nothing for us to buy from on New York, and that's pretty much it about New York. New York has been left behind a lot this week, to be honest. That's fine. Um, yeah. Go down to one minute, see what we can get, if anything. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, complicated unless we consider this the market shift right and this the fair value gap it's basically impossible or this the market shift which i wouldn't being this the first swing high that is actually created and the market shift happens here we could have executed on this it is the five steps it's not something that i would have taken i'm gonna be fully honest not something that I would have taken and targets this up here. I've have taken quite a lot to be fair. Although probably would have gone for 4R instead of 4.7. That would have been fine. And this would have been complicated to hold through, but overall it makes sense on the entire thing. So potential entry again, it is based on the five steps because we have the market shift and the fair value gap within the low and the high that causes that market shift. But it is Oh, it happens in between the kill zones. Oh. So not something that I could have taken. Okay, never mind. I thought that was the kill zone. Nothing on this day. And let's jump for the last one, which is Friday. And December 2nd. Keep in mind that we have NFP, so the only one that we're actually going to be paying, paying attention to is uh, London, really. It's London. Friday, December 2nd, let's see what London did. Have a run of buys of liquidity, aggressive move lower, run of sell side liquidity. Uh, so we have opportunity to sell from here and here. And then to buy, we actually don't get any clear for value gaps to buy from, so nothing. Let's see if the lower time from actually give us an entry. This mitigation, is this a market shift? That is just one candle, so I don't think we could or should consider that as a market shift. Same with this one, although this one doesn't have a for value gap. And then interest rates much higher, right? So no selling on that one, which makes us avoid a loss. And then we basically get nothing else, right? Because again, London, sorry, New York had an FB as it is the first Friday of the month. Nothing for us to do. A uh, very boring week, I believe. Actually check that. We had 3.5 and minus one through London. So that means that we basically got everything through London. Plus 2.5 R, 2.5 R in London. Now we have week of Monday, December 5th. Okay. Yes, I mean, December 5th to December 8th. Oh, this is this week, isn't it? Theoretically, it should be. Uh, yeah, and it is 5 from 9, of course. So we have the last week on which I remember a few things. Let's do this. And yeah, I'll be back in a sec. So last but not least, this week, which began on which began on Monday 5th, December, December Monday 5th. And let's see what we had this week. So London on Monday begins with a tiny bit of consolidation, aggression, aggressive move lower, goes higher. There's, there's a tiny run sell side liquidity, but market shift happens here and doesn't have any kind of fair belly gap. It does sweep above this highs, so maybe something that could have been used, but it barely does so. So I'm going to count that as liquidity. Market shift below this low, so step one, step two, step two with this for value gap. But as you can see, mitigation happens after the session. So nothing for us to do on that one. Price through the London kill zone, through the New York kill zone, sorry, begins with a little bit of consolidation and retracement. Starts going aggressively higher. Sweep on buys liquidity, sweep on buys liquidity. 
strong buys of liquidity, right? Due to this couple of highs uh, being held as much as they were. A very nice market shift. And on the five minute, I can't really see anything but 15. Oh, so that was a trade on this one. And the problem with this one that I that, that I have with this one specifically is the market shift in the fifth, fifth minute. On the five minute, we can clearly see that there's a market shift. We can clearly see that there is a swing low. On the fifth minute, it doesn't look as clear as it could, in my opinion, right? But basically, step one being this run of liquidity, step two being the aggressive move lower that takes up, that causes this theoretical market shift. We have this and the higher for volume gap, and as you can see, price actually trades back into it. And in the live market, it actually traded inside of the fair value gap for just one tick. So you can see this one actually looks much more than one tick. It's four, theoretically. But if I remember correctly, and I did do the analysis on the prior community, um, it was just one tick or maybe two, but it was barely mitigating. So another thing that I didn't really like about this entry, but we get the market shift, the fair value gap, and the potential execution. Right Now, is this a five steps? Five steps. Uh, thing is that I didn't take this trade for multiple reasons. Initially, because I didn't, I was not even looking at this because we didn't get uh price trading into actual. So for me, that fair value gap was not valid due to the market shift and the fact that it barely had mitigated the fair value gap. That kind of complicates my analysis on it. But theoretically, if we were to count this as market shift, we have everything that we look for, really. So, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Target would have been all the way down here, but that gives us a 7.60. So, probably close that 5, as it is a pretty simple target. I, I personally didn't take it. That doesn't necessarily mean that we should have not or should have taken it. Uh, so, I can't say for sure what we should have done about it. Uh, but we'll count it. We'll count it as something that we could have taken as it is theoretically the five steps, just not something that I personally would have traded. I didn't trade it, and it is what it is. So, what else? Uh, five steps wise, I do not believe we have anything else to actually try to look for. So, that's pretty much it about Monday. Monday with a lovely 5 part through New York, while London gave us nothing. So, let's jump on to the next day. Okay, London begins going higher, takes. I love buy sell liquidity. These are uh, far away lows. Ice, sorry. So you can see pretty clean. And then we have this little bit of a reaction here, which is also a little bit of buy sell liquidity. Market shift below this low. If an entry actually happened here, that stop loss, that is a uh, stop loss that we would have taken. So we'll analyze it either way. We get a tiny run of liquidity. Very tiny, in my opinion, but because we're looking at the five steps here, we get the market shift, everything, and the entry just fails because this ended up being liquidity, and then we get another one. I do believe also we have really nice displacement. I do believe we could have tried to look for lower time for opportunities on that one. New York wise, what do we get? So, run sells the liquidity from back here, and I think we had a tiny run below the slows. Tiny run, I wouldn't really consider it that much. Five minute has this tiny bit of a fair rally gap right before the market shift. And we get one and two potential entries. We'll see what happens. Oh, this is this is actually what's this? Oh, this is the Asian session. Okay, so nothing for us to look at here. Never mind. This is the New York kill, the London kill zone. Take some cells of liquidity. Uh we'll see. We'll see. We theoretically have potentially the five steps on that. Continues going higher, blah, 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 and the trades above this high, this tiny bit of high, market shift could be this, although I like this one better. So we could have used either this one, or this is fine, market shift, it is kind of trend, even with, uh, actually previous, right, previous day's price action was bearish. Okay. Oh, well, we're, we're, we don't care about bias. So we got run and buy sell liquidity, aggressive move lower. Market shift, in my opinion, is below this low, but either way, we get this for value gap, right? Press trace back into it, so let's we'll analyze in a second what we can get out of it. The price mitigates the area. First move, as you can see, does not provide a market shift. Second move does not provide a market shift. Third provides market shift and a for value gap as it should. 
giving us this lovely execution. This is an entry that I didn't take it due to bias. So it's definitely nice to see, basing ourselves on the five steps alone. Definitely could have gotten it. So going below this low, this is 2.8R. Uh, I go always for three or four. So I think either the entry should have been higher or the target larger. Either way, it would have been the same outcome. But basically, 3R is what I want to take out of this. So we'll add it to the list plus 3R. And that's pretty much it about this one. This was, sorry, this was Tuesday, December 6th. Previous day was Monday, December 5th. Okay, Wednesday, December 7th. Let's see what this couple of sessions provided us with. Price is going lower. To London, it begins bearishly, takes out some liquidity, aggressive move higher, market shift, fair value gap, potential lower time for opportunities. And if I remember correctly, we actually get some really nice uh, price action in the lower time frames. Continuation of the trend, blah blah blah, and that is well, actually, we get run and buy some liquidity, market shift, fair value gap, the true to sell right at the end of the session. We'll see if that actually provides with anything. Uh, that's a spring New York. You can see it's going higher. We get round by some liquidity, market shift, and for value gap. There is actually an entry here. Entry that I took close to 3R, was it? Or, oh no, it was 2.5 or something like that. We'll see. So, uh, five minute for value gap, first reaction, no market shift, second reaction, market shift without a for value gap. Then we get another break of structure. And the continuation of the trend with this beautiful fair value gap 54 and above this high i get a better at 2.4 above this 3r 3.3r in my opinion that's very lovely and this one provides some market shift but doesn't have a fair value gap and also it kind of happens after the session so i'm going to say no so that's 3.3 through london and then New York, the five steps, the execution on this entry right here, stop us up here, 83, theoretically. Target, there's many things that we can try to target. Either way, it's really complicated. Uh, five far all the way down to this. As it is somewhat counter trend, right? We're going basically against the trend, and we don't really have any close target before five far. 3.5. 4R is definitely something that I'm happy with taking. So let's just go for that. Lovely trade. The only problem would have been this, this, basically, right? Uh, it's the only thing that we could have encounter, encountered that could have made us um, get out of the trade, get out with a break even. That really depends on how the trades would have been managed. That's pretty much it about Wednesday. So Thursday, December 8th, let's see what we get. London, choice higher, buy some liquidity, market shift happens here for value gap, mitigation it happens after session. Uh, nothing here, run sell side happens after session, so nothing for us to do. Run and buy some liquidity with London high being included in it. We have that high being taken and this high, couple of highs being taken, so we get five steps to try to, sorry, three steps at least to try to sell. And then run and sell some liquidity. And a fair value gap to try to buy as well. Let's see what we can get in this. So sell side, as you can see, this is the fair value gap mitigated here. The price goes aggressively higher. Nothing for us to actually do. And buy wise, run of liquidity, aggressive of fire, five minute fair value gap. The market shift mitigates it. Market shift above this high. That's my entry. And this is the stop loss that I took this week. Which, in my opinion, is a pretty valid entry. And I do not remember target. Which one was it? Going all the way up there? I think so. It doesn't get it so far. But I'm pretty sure it did get it later on. Yeah, okay. That would have been 4.65 power that could have been taken. But sadly, price actually decided to take this low. Which is expected completely. Due to the fact that this low comes back down in a straight line reacts respects the low and well that's just not ideal right then we have sell liquidity being taken below all of those lows 
And as you can see, we could have considered this as a market shift. I personally didn't, so I'm not going to consider this trade. And I have said multiple times by avoiding losses and avoiding wins in some cases, um, one candle market shift tends to not be too good. But this would have been a lovely entry that could have allowed us to recover from the loss without much of an issue. Targeting the same high, which would have been a nice 2.7 AR. So maybe just up to 3R or lower the entry and get the 3R either way. So we didn't get anything except the loss, right? Yes. Okay. So New York minus one. And we shall continue. Friday, December 9th, having the fact that New York has PPI, I'm going to avoid it completely. And what ended up happening with the trade? It basically will be running at profitable at profits basically but nothing for us to truly use and we basically through london got a very nice run of spice of liquidity an aggressive mid floor a beautiful fair value gap and the five steps and the bullet step three and four and five beautifully the market shift the execution or the area to execute from and stop loss remember as usual goes to the high plus four right on the bot on the sales plus four on the spies plus two beautiful trade peaks at around 4.83 well actually continues coming lower but we would have not traded through all of that price action but peaks at 13 r and my initial target was this one 3.83 more than enough for us to take for london and a beautiful trade really right plus three 0.83 R. Beautiful. So that's pretty much it about the past four weeks. Let's do a little bit of math. And it's 17.63 R. And that is with 8, 11.5, 10.5 New York, and 7.1, 7.13, which shows how this week was very generous in both uh, the sessions, really. Giving us just the one loss uh, that I don't really recall where. So let's do the, the major math. Okay, those are some really promising numbers. Giving us a 70% win rate through London and a 60% win rate through New York with a, a very, 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 very uh, major difference in between New York and London with the risk, uh, not the risk, but the R's in return, right? Uh, comparing ourselves to between, between the two, right? And both provided three losses, while um, London gave us eight wins against five wins by New York, which makes it very interesting. So overall, six losses plus 8.5. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 wins, giving us 27, basically, or 26 8 plus 14 for 13. That's 41. 11 R. Giving us 6 L, 13 win rate, 70% win rate, I think. 70 ish, 70% ish win rate. We could do the, the, cal the cal calculation about it, like the exact percentage. I don't think that's really necessary. Beautiful actual outcome, right? Which gives us a, something to think about. That the five steps without really worrying about much the direction just looking for those five things to occur together as a really nice outcome right really nice outcome and even if we wanted to just say let's suppose we had four more losses than we actually had on this back testing we still get ahead with 10 r through london through just trading new york sorry and 22 r when trading london right so, of course, lowers a lot the win rate and the overall outcome, but it's still a lot of, um, a lot, right? A lot of outcome, a result. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but this was a very interesting video to make. I think the five steps were applied exactly as I teach them, as I use them in a, in a daily basis. And we're not even counting things like this one as an example. And there are some through London that I remember, uh, not some, but I think it was only one that I did count, which was a little bit complicated to take, but overall, it's there, right? So, 
yeah some beautiful some beautiful results so i hope you enjoyed this video hope this video was of help and i'll be talking to you on the next one